Hey, Bjorn Strong the Arm here. I uh, want to talk a little bit more about Edith Finch. As you might have noticed when we finished uh, the game, I was kind of at a loss for words. I didn't really know what to say. I was a little bit like, what's going on here? And um, the more I was like, trying to figure out why my reaction was like that, why I was kind of just stumped, it's, I think I was actually kind of disappointed in the ending. But like, to be clear, I mean, disappointed in the ending because I thought it was like really excellent storytelling overall. And so the bar was really high and I feel like it just didn't quite kind of clear the bar in the end. And so I thought maybe I'd take a minute and explain like what I think about the story and both kind of what my disappointment is, but also what I feel like is the, is like going on in this story that it makes it kind of really good and really compelling. Um, now there's a couple, I think like of main tensions in this story. Like there's one of the main tensions is there's this kind of like, what really happened? Like did, um, did Molly like really turn into all those animals and that kind of magical stuff happened? Uh, or, you know, it, it could have been, or like, did, um, did Barbara really get killed by monsters? And like, that's, that's an interpretation that could be like what, what happened. But like, also like one thing that was interesting is Calvin in his story said something about how after Molly died, he said he'd never eat mushrooms again. So like, it's possible that what happened is she just ate some, uh, some, some mushrooms that were poisonous and she hallucinated all that stuff and then kind of wrote down what happened before dying. And like with Barbara's story, it could have just been like a killer. It's not like a comic book is like a super reliable source of saying what really happened. And there are all these papers around about the unsolved murder when you're kind of walking up to it. You know, things like that. And so one thing is like the story just doesn't doesn't give you an answer. It doesn't say, oh, this is what really happened or that's what's really happened. And there's this kind of tension between like, is it is there stuff that's magical and kind of curse going on, or is it just kind of really bad luck for this family? Uh, and the story doesn't doesn't tell you unless you interpret both ways. And I, I really respect that. I think that's a really neat feature. Uh, and the the kind of unable to know everything or get all the answers theme, I think works really, really well. And that's like one of the main tensions is just like the wanting to know what really happened, but then never like getting that. And then I think like the second tension kind of in the story, I feel like it's kind of really represented by like the tension between Don and Grandma Edie. And here it's, it's like a little weird. Um, one thing I thought was really a little bit strange towards the end is like Don obviously really blames Grandma Edie and her stories for all the bad stuff, for like the disappearance of Milton and the death of Lewis. And she's like, these stories are tearing the family apart. But I mean, Lewis is a, Milton's a special case, but Lewis, like the stories, the family stories, like nothing to do with that. He's just a really bright kid and he's stuck in this dead end job. And he's just so bored and he sort of retreats into his mind until he just loses it. And he, sticks his head under the, the chopper and it's, it's a totally like just a gutting story, but like the, the kind of curse stuff has nothing to do with that. It's not like Lewis was like really worked up about what happened to the ancestors and, and got obsessed with that or anything. So, you know, and the other, the other like death that Don kind of really is directly involved with is with her father where the, the buck kind of knocks him off but he was like the most least of the, oh, the stories and we're so cursed kind of member. He, he really just like went out and, you know, grappled death by the horns to probably use a bad metaphor in this kind of circumstance. Um, so I thought it was a little bit weird that Dawn was, was so like that, but maybe it's just Dawn just kind of projected all of the bad stuff onto the stories and onto the grandma. Or maybe it's, maybe it's that the grandma like, she just kept talking and talking and talking about it. And it kind of just drove Dawn kind of off the deep end, let, let Dawn kind of project it. But whatever Dawn's motivations, and maybe they're a little bit odd. Like, I think this is, they also could drive one of the really main themes. Cause Dawn, she sees these stories as dangerous. She sees the stories as kind of tearing the family apart, but like the stories are also what ties the family together as a family. Like, it's really striking. Whenever we like we dive into the past, I always feel like the house was really full. Like, kind of like all those characters were kind of there and around at the same time. And, but really, like, uh, there's usually no more than like four or five people living in the house at any given time. Sometimes like closer to three because people keep dying off at young ages and things. And it's this huge house and it's always like really kind of empty. Like, it was kind of funny, like at the end, <laughs> um, 
Edith's room and Dawn's room, like way at the top, so far away from the rest of that. There's like huge empty house when they're living there between like Edith's room at the very top and the kitchen down at the bottom where they have dinner. It's a little bit kind of crazy, but because the house, because the house I think is so big and the rooms like never get repurposed, like, you know, the, the twins room remains the kind of the kid twins room for 50, 60 years or whatever. Um, but it helped make it feel like the house was once like really alive and full of all the people. And there's all these little memorials and the stories together and they kind of make it feel that way. So it feels like the family is kind of all there and all present, even though there's no like one time when they're all around. And I think it probably makes Edith feel really connected to the people as though she lived with them and knew them, even though the only stories she ever knew were just the stories about the death. And I think it makes a lot of sense because like in a weird way, a family, like extended family, you know, beyond just, and even like your own family, when you come back to get together for the holidays or whatever, like family just kind of is the stories that we tell. And that's what kind of unifies the stories. And then the stories that like Edie chooses to tell, Grandma Edie, she like really focuses on the ones that are like death and tragedy all the time. And so Dawn, and then Edith gets kind of pulled along with this. She has this choice that she's going to make about... Like, are you going to really be part of the family? Are you going to belong to the family? But that means, like, embracing these stories that Dawn thinks has this really bad effect. It makes the family kind of melancholy and prone to more tragedy. So Dawn wants to get rid of the stories, but then she has to, like, break herself away from the Finch family. And kind of, like, you know, she goes off to India and kind of just tries to sever ties. And then it doesn't work and she comes back. But she's always got this really kind of tenuous relation with her history and with like her family who it is and then you know Edith like throughout the story it's about her reconnecting with the family but through these stories um and I think like that's excellent it works so well that, that thing ties her really well the way like the um you know on both those fronts like for most of the deaths you can read a story about there being some supernatural force or curse that's kind of killing him or it just could be like bad luck plus like hyperactive imagination. And then this fact of the stories plus like Edie's superstition, it's what makes Dawn's choice like really compelling. She can have this fractured relationship with her family and everything it stands for because she doesn't like like the stories and superstition. But it's also kind of this like big tragedy because the family doesn't have to focus on those macabre stories. Like one thing I thought was really great too is like all the shrines, like all the family members they all have this totally unique and interesting character there. Like you know, Sam wanted to be a cowboy when he was young. He becomes like a very loving parent, but also very strict, almost military like disciplinarian. But also like and when he talks, when you hear his voice talking to his daughter or to his ex-wife, like it's also really tender and caring. Um, it's a really interesting character. And it's like Molly and she has her love of animals and she's precocious and Walter's got his trains and it's, everyone's got this unique and different personality. And it feels like there's like lots of stories that could have been told. They weren't just defined by their deaths. They were defined by all these other things that they had. Uh, but the stories that got told by Edie and everybody were all of these kind of tragic ones And so by Grandma Edie. And so Grandma Edie, I think kind of is a tragic character and that she kind of forces this this decision to be made by Dawn of rejecting family or like embracing death and Dawn doesn't want to make that choice and so she's kind of torn and we see that as Edith we see that like Dawn's kind of kind of struggles with that so all in all I feel like that's like what's going on and then in the story we see Edith she wants to reconnect with the family she wants to feel something bigger she's got to go back and read the stories to like become a part of it so then I think oh it's excellent I mean and also I, I haven't said this but the, the way that that the story is told in this game is like an absolute master class just the delivery of these things is fantastic the way like the pacing, the way that the, the re revealing of information is kind of interplayed with like what you're doing and as you're walking around and just, you kind of walk past something and Edith gives you some more information, top notch, really well done. But I think once you understand all that, I can understand better why I found like it's so disappointing. And there are kind of two really things that I thought really disappointing. So one was like the disappearance of Milton because that's that feels like that's obviously this really big mystery. And, and when you start playing, it's really driving. And the mystery's not solved. And at first I thought maybe like that's what I was really 
uh, kind of not liking is just that there was no kind of solution. But that's actually true of like lots of the deaths. That's where it can be like read one way or another. It could be supernatural or it could be uh, kind of ordinary natural causes. And yet they don't feel quite so like dissatisfying. And I think actually what it is, is like, there's just no, not even a story. We have this mystery, but we have like no story at all about Milton. All we get is this little flip book of him painting a door and disappearing. We don't really like know who he is as a character. We know he likes to paint, but that's not, that's not a whole lot. Like, what does he like to paint? What, what kind of things capture his interest? There's like crown, a lot of crowns and that's kind of it. And there's other things like kind of feel like it could tie in with the story that don't make sense. Like why, why did Lewis blame himself for Milton's disappearance? Like, I could see it. Like it could have been done where they tell a story about how like they go off and Milton is painting um, and Lewis is like there with him and, and they play a hide and seek. And then, you know, Milton paints a door and then Lewis comes back and he's gone. And maybe, maybe like Milton's always saying, yeah, I'm going to, get out of here someday. Like what, what, what motivated Milton? Like, did he love being part of the family? Did he want to get away? We just don't know any of that stuff. And I feel like it really feels flat because it's not just like, you don't know what, it's not like, like there's no defined answer. Like that's fine. There's no defined answer what happened to him, but there wasn't any, there wasn't any connection to him. And he was such like a pivotal character in like the terms of the plot but he just feel like a plot point and we don't get to know him at all. And I think that's something similar is what like really bothered me about not getting to finish Edie's story too. Like the whole thing is about the stories and we don't, we don't need the Edie story because we think it'll give us answers. In fact, like whatever Edie is, is nuts. She's, she's got like her son is living in her basement and she gives a, in, she gives a interview to like the national Enquirer saying that it's a like mole man or something like that. She's, she's got, she's kind of crazy. So we're, we're not going to like believe the story. She's a totally unreliable narrator, but like you don't get to hear it. You don't get to hear how the story is meant to end. You don't get to hear what it was that Edie wanted, Grandma Edie wanted Edith to know so badly. And I just feel strange because we're just kind of left hanging. It's like, like storyus interruptus. Edith, e e Grandma Edie remains kind of half storied in a way that like almost none of the other characters do. And, I think that's like why I find it then kind of really dissatisfying because like this theme of the stories and the connection and what, what Edith came, that's kind of broken there at the end. She doesn't get that connection. We don't get to see the connection with grandma Edie. Um, and then like, I think that the, the fact that she died at the ending, like that didn't really bother me. I kind of saw it telegraphed a long way off. I, I did think like the kind of device of she dies in childbirth was maybe a little cliche or anticlimactic. Um, I mean, you know, what, whatever. But I also feel like we kind of like don't quite as much get Edith's story as well. And I feel like if Edie, if there could have been something there in that story of Edie and Edith that like really connected them as characters, that she could have just kind of passed on to her son, that would have been like a much more powerful way, I think, of kind of drawing these themes all together. And you don't have to believe Edie's story. It came one of these things where, you know, either you believe the supernatural or you think she's just like kind of hallucinating or kind of just kind of off her rocker. Um, you know, I, just, I feel like that's kind of really missing. And so, and to be clear, like, I think this is why I was kind of disappointed. And I think it's only possible to be disappointed at this level because overall, the game and the storytelling were just so very, very good. It was such like a really high quality that I wanted to see it really carried out and tied together really tightly. Um, but I think it was kind of good in a way because being disappointed it helped me to kind of think through and work through what I felt was like really the kind of emotional heart of the game, the tension between like the stories and and the problems with them, but also wanting to be a part of the family and like not having answers, but feeling connected to something that's kind of bigger and that was there before you and that will last without you. So anyway, so those are my opinions. Those are my thoughts. Um, really, really interested to know what you all thought of the story too. Like maybe you think I'm totally off base and you had like a totally different take on it. Love to hear that too. Leave it in the comments. I'd love to, you know, have more of a conversation about that. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you soon.